All right, guys, for our first tip, I'd like to go over when you make a new project, we'll just go ahead and make one to the desktop, it puts in all of this extra stuff you're probably not going to use entirely. What I usually do is, when I make a new project, let's go ahead and check the size of it, it's close to 400 megabytes. However, when I add in all of the extra stuff I have, the music files I've downloaded and everything, it's almost close to a gigabyte. That's not good when you want to try and upload this and share it amongst your friends or anyone who's interested in playing it because it doesn't need to be this big. You're not going to have hundreds of different songs in your game just yet. Maybe later down the road you will, but for now what I typically do is I make two games. I make one here that is only 100 megabytes roughly. It's basically just an empty project file and then I populate in it what I exactly need at the time. And then I have my second file here with everything in it that I could possibly have in this file. Tip number two. What I usually do to keep both of my game files, the one with only the essentials I need for it, and the one with everything I could possibly add into my game, I also keep an information file and any other files that may be of use to me. For example, an information file, this is basically where I put my notes, so game window size and pixels and tiles. It's very useful to have a quick way of getting to this in case you need to make some sort of title card or anything that involves adding a picture to your game. And as another note, just things to keep everything aligned, so all of the sound files that are in my video game will be at 100% rather than the default 90 or 95, whatever it is. And of course I have my list of switches and list of variables I decide to use in my video game. And another help file is this RMMV master script list. This basically is a complete Excel file that has a whole bunch of useful information in it about how you would refer to some things in the game. Just in case you had to actually code some scripts yourself and you needed to refer to some of these. Tip number three is pretty tedious, but I do think it's very important in a video game to interact with as many things as you possibly can. And it's a great way to pass the time when you can't think of something to add in your video game. This oven up here is something that I made where if you interact with it, it turns on. And then it turns off. You could expand this into things like, what I had planned for this game is if you turned on every single oven that the player can possibly walk up to, you would get a special ability and it would be related to fire. As well as the sink over here, uh, your character just says it's a sink. So you can add a whole bunch of easter eggs to your video game and a lot of really cool features that the player might enjoy. So like this wardrobe gives me a magic potion. Just simple little things like that. My fourth tip mainly is about cutscenes, where at the beginning of a cutscene, for example this cutscene here, what I'm doing is changing the menu access for the character to disable so that they can't just access the menu in the middle of a cutscene, and then I have hide hood. In a cutscene you don't want any overlays to be seen, you want it to feel cinematic and all of that stuff. At the very end of this cutscene somewhere, I have to go ahead and re-enable and turn the hood back on so the player can actually see it and all of this other stuff, and if I do this 50 or more times at the beginning and end of every single cutscene, maybe I'll miss one. Or worse, maybe later in the game there's something I need to add to this, so I need to go back and add it 50 or more times. Now, instead of adding in all of these checks to the beginning and end of every cutscene, what you can do is create a switch called Beginning Cutscene, and whenever that switch is turned on, all of this stuff happens in your common events, so beginning cutscene, name, the same as the switch, parallel, or auto run, not really sure which one's better for this. And of course the switch to run this common event is beginning cutscene. And then put everything in here that you want to add in the beginning of every cutscene of your games. Disable the menu access, hide the hood, maybe freeze time, or something like that. And then at the end of this just make sure you turn the switch back off so it can be turned on again. And then at the very end of a cutscene, go ahead and flip another switch called Ending Cutscene. And the Ending Cutscene common event, which is turned on by the Ending Cutscene switch, enables everything back. And everything is nicely handled in these two boxes instead of 50 or more times throughout your video game. And for our last tip, number 5, you should always keep in mind how your player is going to be transitioned from map to map. Now let's say for example you decide to leave the map by transitioning like this, where the player has to get to the very end there and then they get transitioned through some sort of plug-in or something like that. The only problem I have with this is the character is not in the center of the screen and that is very important if this is going to be played on a touch screen because if I use my mouse here to try and move over here, I, I 
have to keep moving my finger over, while if they stay in the middle of the screen, I can just move my mouse around the character, and no matter what, they will keep moving in that direction. So this is the map that I was just in, where the edges of the map are the edges of the entire visible area. And that's not great if you want your game to be playable easily on some sort of touch screen. So what you would do is just translate the map or move it into the middle of a screen, and based on the width and height of your window, you would just offset your visible map with the very edge of the actual map by enough space just to keep the player in the center. And now see, watch, when I move the player way over here toward the right, the player stays in the middle of the screen, and you don't have to move your mouse or your finger over more to try and edge more and more toward the end of your screen. And of course, this black area will be filled with the next map, right here. And so you would just kind of extend the outsides here. And now when you're in your game walking around, it feels much better to move over here. Now you got to make sure you transfer for your character as soon as they're right here and not any more forward because then the screen won't move and it won't look as good. And that's it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed and see you next time.